All right, so where we left off in the last video, we were looking at layers one and two, and we were trying to wrap those up. So we are pretty much there. That's layers one up here. Layer two is everything down here that rolls over layer one. And we included something that we almost called like layer zero, which was just this background color. That's all. It wasn't anything too fancy. And it helped us get this nice gradual fade. It was a little less uh, abrupt than the old one. So we're done with layers one and two, and now we need to work on layer three. So if we move over to layer three, let's just ignore these three areas up top, okay? We just wanna look at this button right here, okay? This, these three top ones are an animation that we'll work on later on. For now, let's just focus on these right here. So our goal here is to essentially create a play button that resides right here, okay? If we look back at this, play button that needs to scroll up with all the items that are um, that are part of this playlist. Now what we'll work on later is this transition or this animation. As it progresses through the top we get this as it pauses right there and converts to the play sign rather than the word play. But we want to first work on just getting this movable button. Okay. So first things first is we need, we need to just get this button into place. And then we need to figure out how to let it move and then we need to figure out how to animate it. So those are the three the three pieces. I think it's important to look at the end product and recognize the most elementary pieces of it. So first let's just make a button that goes right there. So just to refresh ourselves, the way this the way we're adding these layers on top of each other is we are looking at what we call the Z stack. So a Z stack let us add things on top of each other like so. So a layer zero was that background color. Layer one was this, layer two is this, layer three will be this right here, okay, this play button. So let's go ahead and add layer three, so layer three. Now, layer three is obviously going to have a text, and that text is going to say play, okay, and let's make it say play in all caps, okay. That text will obviously be white, so it's foreground color will be dot white. Okay, there it is. Stationary. It's not doesn't look the way we want it to yet, but we made it. Now it's just a text, okay? And now we're going to give it a background color. Okay. Background color. We'll look at Spotify's branding, um, their official branding guidelines. So we can actually click right here and it'll give us the exact guidelines. Let's see if they give us the color. Here it is. Uh, RGB. It's 30, 215, and 96. So type in red and it'll give us the initializer that lets us do RGB. So it'll be 30 over 255. The next one will be 2 and 5 over 255. And the next one will be 96 over 255. And when it updates, when this view updates here, We'll get the color we're looking for. There's the nice Spotify green that we we're hoping for, okay? And what we need to do is we need to make it wider. So we need it to be wider. We're gonna do about 240 pixels and a height of about 50. So what we'll do is I'm, I'm doing something here that will result in not what we're looking for, just as a teaching point, okay? So I'm going to give it a width of 200. It's going to, this is going to drive home a point that we talked about earlier. So it gives us a width of 240 and a height of 50. And, and this truly did play out the way we had wanted it. This, this is exactly 240 wide. This button or this text is 240 wide and its height is 50. And it doesn't look like that. But that's because we put our background first. So our background needs to come after we've decided all the sizes of everything. And that, now it looks proper. So order is very crucial here, okay? So we need to decide the size and the frame, and then we need to change the color. So now that we got that covered, we need to move it upwards. And in addition to moving it upwards, uh, we need to actually round these corners. So let's start with the rounding of the corners, okay? So for rounding the corners, what we can do is we can add a corner radius. And to get a nice, perfect, so if I can make a corner radius of five, for instance, 
but it just kind of rounds the edges. It doesn't give us this like perfect half circle end. And there's a nice formula for that. The formula for a perfect half circle end is just half of the smallest edge. So if this is 50 tall, then we need a quarter radius of 55, sorry, of 25. That gives us the perfect half. So that means from it was using this, the, the radius of the circle is 25. That's where corner radius comes in. So we're getting close. We're making something that looks kind of like what we're, what we're looking for, all right? Maybe we'll just perfect the font really quick. We'll say the font will be dot system. And we'll do size and weight uh, dot bold. The size will be of 20. Looking good. All right. And now, now what we need to do is we need to be able to move it up and down. So by default, this is not technically in a vertical stack, or this is just a text and it's dead center because we haven't put it in a vertical stack. So what I can do is I can take this text and I can command click, or I can type it out, but I like to command click, embed in vStack. Now we got it in a vStack. It's still in the center though. So what we can do is below the text, we can put a spacer to push it all the way to the top. Still not where we want it. We can put a spacer that pushes it back towards the middle since the two spacers have equal priority. One pushed it down here and the other one pushed it back up. And we're back in the center, but now what we can do is we can actually play with the frame of this spacer. So we can say its frame has a height of 100. Okay, that's not where we want it, but it under helped us understand where we might want it. So let's try putting it to 300. Let's see how close we are. 300, we're getting there. Let's try 350. 350 looks just about right. Maybe maybe a nicer number would be about 340, or even maybe 320. Let's do a nice 330. Let's say 335. So that's pretty close to where we want it. So the first thing we said we're trying to do is create the button and place it where we want it. We're not worrying about whether it scrolls or not. We're not worrying about any animations. So we've achieved our first goal. We have a button that is where we want it. So we look here, we created this button, good to go. The next thing we need to do now is we need to make this button move. Because if you look, if I scroll, the button does not move, okay? So I've, I, my first option was to put this play button within the scroll view. But if I were to have done that, that would have actually been a little, a little bit prohibitive when it came time to animate it. So what I did instead is I put it on top. And what we need to do is we need to monitor how far we've scrolled in this scroll view or what we'll call that is the offset. We need to monitor our offset within the scroll view and move this play button accordingly. But what's important to realize is technically when we move this play button, we're not necessarily moving the button. What we're actually doing is we're changing the frame or the height of the spacer above it. So we need to move this progressively upwards by, mi by slowly minimizing the size of this frame, okay? So the way we're gonna do that is something called Geometry Reader, okay? So <clears throat> Geometry Reader is almost like this all-knowing eye of, of essentially what is happening and then the heights of uh, the heights of different areas and the offset of different things. And to give you a better understanding of that, what we'll do is the following. So instead of saying, we'll walk, we'll walk through and you'll kind of get a feel for how it works, okay? So instead of saying the spacer has a height of 335, let's go ahead and create a variable up top that's called, um, we'll call it play button offset, okay? This has to be a CG float. We discussed what a CG float is in a previous video. The CG float has a value of 335, and now we'll just say that the a spacer up top has a height of, of this value up here. So that way, if I change it up here, it changes down here, okay? I'll resume, and nothing should have changed visually. Everything should look exactly the same. For the next yeah. part here, when we get into the geometry reader and uh, making this play button move, uh, that part's gonna take a little bit of time, so why don't we wrap this video up, and we'll get going to that in the next video. All right, thanks.